Okay, if you missed class on Thursday with the coffee morning, uh, we were looking at uh, the people involved in, in Hitler's rise uh, to the chancellorship. And we start off looking at Hermann Müller and the collapse of Müller's Grand Coalition, as seen as the end of Weimar democracy. Uh, Müller's Grand Coalition was made up of five parties headed by uh, the SPD. Uh, Müller was a socialist and um, with the onset of the Great Depression, Miller's government struggled uh, to agree on how to deal with the effects of, of their depression, namely uh, the growing uh, unemployment. Um, so in 1932, Miller went to Hindenburg with a finance bill and uh, told Hindenburg that he could not get the parties in the government to agree to it, so that uh, Hindenburg uh, would then have to pass it by Article 48. But Hindenburg refused and Muller was left with no option but to resign and he was replaced by Henrik Bruning. Uh, Henrik Bruning was from the Central Party. He was an economist and an ex-army officer in the First World War. Um, his, his aim um, during his time in office uh, was to use the Great Depression to actually uh, get the Allies to end reparation repayments. He thought he could use the crisis that Germany was, was in to um, get reparations stopped completely. He also wanted to dismantle the welfare state in Germany. Um, so during his time, his policy of austerity meant that he would cut wages, he cut services, cut unemployment benefits and raise taxes. And this put a lot of strain on, on uh, people who were already suffering greatly. So uh, Bruning then uh, is remembered as the hunger chancellor for, the, for this reason. Um, by 1932, there were 6 million people unemployed. About 40% of German businesses had shut. Um, half of all 16 to 30 year olds were unemployed. So it was a desperate situation. And in the, the September 1930 elections, you can see the, the, the results down here, you can see huge rises for the, for the Nazi party and uh, a not, uh, not so impressive rise, but still a rise all the same for the Communist Party. So the extreme, the extremists were, were gaining uh, during uh, Bruning's uh, chancellorship. Um, during this period as well, there was also the election for uh, president, and um, Hindenburg, who at this stage was uh, in his early eighties, was um, asked or convinced to, to stand again by Henrik Bruning. And it was a close run thing um, with um, Hitler standing against him. Hitler. Uh, achieved 13 and a half million votes with Hindenburg achieving 19, being forced to a second ballot. This was an embarrassment for the president and in some ways he held uh, Bruning responsible uh, for, for the disaster, the, for the embarrassment of the, of the uh, presidential election. So uh, taking it forward then, um, in um, July, or sorry, uh, in May 1932, Bruning is forced to resign. He's forced to resign over the issue of uh, giving out bankrupt Prussian estates to uh, the members of the unemployed. He felt that this was a way of stopping people falling into the hands of communists and Nazis. Um, if he could give um, bankrupt estates uh, to the unemployed, uh, he may sort of uh, turn the situation around. But this didn't sit well with Hindenburg. He felt that he called it agro-communism or agro-Bolshevism. Okay. So, um, Brüning is forced to resign and Franz von Papen takes the helm. Now, Franz von Papen's uh, government is known as the Cabinet of Barons because it had no members of the Reichstag in it, uh, bizarrely, uh, a government without anybody in it who is elected by the people. Uh, Franz von Papen uh, was a monarchist and, and no friend of democracy, and he felt that he could uh, use uh, the Nazi strength uh, within the, the Reichstag to get changes made to the constitution, uh, which would uh, water down, if you like, the, the democratic elements of the Weimar constitution. Um, he tried to get uh, build a coalition with the Nazis, but the Nazis refused uh, to work with any other party. And on the first day uh, the Papen was in the Reichstag, the Nazis and communists walked out, uh, leaving Papen no other option but to call an election. So an election was held in July 1932, and it was a disaster for Papen. 
as the Nazis polled 230 seats, making them the largest party in the Reichstag. And you can see that there were significant gains for the, the communists as well. Um, Papen struggled on uh, for a, another few months. Um, uh, however, it, the situation he was in was um, uh, impossible. Uh, he asked Hindenburg could he rule by Article 48. Hindenburg said he needed the support of the Reichstag, so another election was called. Um, this time the Nazi vote did fall, um, possibly because people had seen that even, even as the largest party in the Reichstag, Hindenburg had refused to make Hitler the Chancellor. So uh, that could be one reason. Another possible reason is that by November 1932, uh, the economic situation was actually starting to improve and unemployment was falling. So there, that figure is significant, but you can see that there was a substantial rise again for the communists. And uh, we heard a figure somewhere that uh, the communist party's membership had increased to about 6 million uh, by the end of 1932. So communism is a, is a big threat here. And we've got to keep in mind that a lot of these people possibly feared communism more than they, than they feared Hitler. So, uh, having failed uh, to get a Reichstag that could work with him, Papen uh, was forced to resign and Kurt von Schleicher, uh, an army officer, was appointed in his place. Uh, Schleicher had uh, promised Hindenburg that he could get the Nazis to cooperate with him. Uh, uh, but again, he's f he f uh, faced the same problem that von Papen had. Adolf Hitler refused uh, to agree to any deal that would mean uh, he, the, the Nazi party would be constrained in a coalition with other parties. Uh, so again, uh, Schle Schleicher failed. Um, um, he tried to get Gregor Strasser on side by offering Gregor Strasser uh, the vice chancellorship, but he failed in that as well. Um, in the final week of, of January 1933, the situation was dire. There was no government. Uh, the chancellors were unable to uh, gain any support within the Reichstag. The Reichstag uh, wasn't even meeting anymore. Uh, the violence in the street between communists and the SA was 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 uh, reaching uh, critical levels, and many people feared that there was going to be a bloody revolution. At this point, Papen and Oscar Hindenburg, uh, President Hindenburg's son, uh, met with President Hindenburg and persuaded him that Hitler could be tamed and that they could use Hitler to bring the situation under control. Um, before this, in the background, Papen had been meeting Hitler and uh, he and Hitler made a deal that if Hitler was given the chancellorship, von Papen would be his vice chancellor and, von, and uh, the Nazis would be allowed four ministers in a, in, a, in a government. Hitler agreed to this. He probably realised that this is the best he could do now uh, once uh, he had seen that his election figures were starting to fall. Um, so they approached Hindenburg. Uh, Hindenburg was also under pressure from industrialists such as uh, Fritz Thyssen, uh, Krupp and Heimar Schacht. Uh, you'll come across these names again. And so he was under pressure from all these sides to try and uh, resolve the situation and try to prevent a revolution. So eventually, in Jan the 30th of January 1933, Hindenburg appointed Hitler as Chancellor of Germany.